Rubber and grommet, or rubber and grommet, needle and grommet. The needle is not punched through the grommet, and it looks like it's good in there. Rubber's good, and the me matching mechanism is solid. What number did we leave off with? The Sims target or shooter 17 is in the batter's box right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Now, you see it? No. You got it there? Yeah. Alright. When the seals get to here, it gets hard again. That's the problem. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Another foot. So you're going to go, you're going to step up onto the firing line in the dead pits up there, or sorry, in the pits as I was. And um, you're going to have your missile, you'll have your A gunner stand directly behind you. He's going to assist with targeting and acquiring that aircraft as you're firing. So you're going to step up to the line. You're going to have your, right now we have a NICAD, which is a trainer battery. But when you're up there, you're going to have a BCU, battery coolant unit. That's going to provide power for the missile 
while it's still spinning up in here, it's also going to provide that argon gas that cools the missile. So you're going to step up, you're going to insert your BCU or NICAD, you're going to look over the sights, you're going to find out where that aircraft is at. Once you've seen that aircraft with the missile shouldered, hand forward on the uncage button, and your other hand back here on the SNA switch and the trigger, you're going to acquire that aircraft, you see it, you can track it in the sights. So now you're going to lift up and you're going to activate by pressing down and in on this SNA switch, safety and actuator switch. And as you can hear right now, back here you've got your speaker, which is going to provide those tones to let you know if you're tracking the aircraft. And you've got your bones transducer. This is going to vibrate against the gunner's cheek so that he can feel the tone because sometimes it's loud aircraft flying by, possible gunfire in the background. So. You're going to hear those two things going off. This NICAT won't last very long. It's pretty much dead. So you've seen the aircraft, and the reason you activate on a clear blue sky, you're going to take your sights, and you're going to put them above, below, or side to side on the aircraft and activate on that clear blue sky. The reason for doing that is you want this weapon tracks with negative UV and IR light. So you want to give it a clear picture to set the tracker on. So that way, when you look at the plane, it's tracking that negative UV light or the light that the plane is blocking out. So that's how that helps you acquire that target. So once you've, once again, tracking, activate clear blue sky, safety and actuator switch. You're gonna sight in, you can see the aircraft coming. I'll quiet that down so you can hear. You're gonna sight in on that aircraft. You're gonna put your rear sight reticle, match it up with your range ring. You're gonna put the aircraft straight into that range ring. So you're tracking the aircraft and you're going to hear the tones going. You'll be able to tell the difference between the tone of a tracked aircraft and if it's untracked. So once you hear that tone, you're going to up here, press that uncage button. So what this uncage switch does is it allows this seeker head right here in the front. Right now, it's at a fixed angle with these sights, so it's not moving at all. Once you press this uncage switch, it's going to allow that seeker head to track independently from the missile. So this little gyro up here, this seeker eye is going to be moving around looking at that aircraft. And the reason for that is you need to super elevate this missile upwards. Sorry. You need to super elevate this missile upwards so that when it fires out, that launch motor is going to push it out of the tube and then the launch motor will detach and the flight motor will kick in. So there's about nine yards where this missile will just be free floating in the air between the detachment of the launch motor and the initiation of the flight motor. So that space that it's going to fall right there, that's the reasoning for super elevating the missile. So you sight it in, SNA switch on clear blue sky, tracking, I've got tone, press down my uncage button, then I'm going to super elevate, and in this rear reticle, you're going to put it inside the uh, canoe. There's a small square and then two small grooves that you call the canoes. So I'm going to look down from my range ring, I'm going to put it in that canoe, and depending on which direction it's traveling, and what kind of aircraft it is, I'll super elevate and I may lead left or lead right depending on the direction of the type of aircraft. For fixed wing aircraft, like these targets that we have out here, and rotary wing aircraft, like helicopters, prop planes, you won't do any sort of lead, they're slow moving aircraft. But for a jet aircraft, you're going to have to lead that aircraft so that the missile doesn't have to catch up to it. So once you've done all that, you've uncaged, range ring, down to your canoe, you're tracking, you do your lead if you need it, you're going to pull and depress that trigger for three to five seconds and wait for that missile to fire. And once the missile has left this tube, it's a fire and forget weapon system. So that missile is on its own, tracking on its own, headed towards that aircraft. Good shot, Lambert. Good shot. Alright, you're good. That's a failure.